Welcome to Onondaga Nation Fieldhouse here in Nedro, New York, where our second game of the day is the Toronto Tigers and the Aquasasni Aces. Toronto in the black, Aquasasni in the right, in the white, both with orange accents, so a lot of orange. Ball got stuck in the stick of Toronto faceoff man, of Toronto's faceoff man. So Aquasasti goes on the attack. Aquasasti was shut out yesterday playing Team USA. Not necessarily a surprise to get shut out playing Team USA. That shot by Skylar Davis stopped by Toronto's goalie. Toronto, meanwhile, lost five to four to the Casey Powell team that is here. Kicked across now for Toronto. And so we're dealing with a problem that has been consistent throughout this in terms of calling this game for you. Teams were not submitting rosters in advance, which makes it difficult as an announcer to be able to call games. And then they're saying things like, well, it's our same roster as yesterday, except not all their players were here on Thursday. As that shot from Kendrick Angus gets stopped. And that's clearly the case with Toronto. Shot there, stopped by Charles Claxton. Claxton comes away with the loose ball for Toronto. Kicks that forward. Claxton, a very promising goalie. That loose ball gets kicked away And there's a goal for the Toronto Tigers. And again, it's one of those players that there was no 99 on their roster a day ago, but there is one now. So that's part of the, the challenge here at LAS NAI. Unlike most events, rosters we're not necessarily set teams, of course. It's, a, it's not a tournament where like, you have to be part of a national team and you had to do whatever. So teams were solidifying rosters, putting guys on their roster, pre-tournament rosters that thought would be back or thought might be able to get. And then you have things like the player with the ball right now who apparently was not here last night because when they said, oh, it's the same roster that played yesterday, he was not on that roster. So that shot by James Spence stopped easily, but a slash called against Keldron King for Aquasasni, and Aquasasni winds up in the box. So again, here comes the offense for Toronto. And although they said it's the same players who were here yesterday, the truth is they're not all the same players. Spence comes away with that, feeds it in front. Shot wide. Ball then, nice check to get it stolen. Keep it out, they're just gonna keep it loose and it will stay. Ooh, a big hit at the whistle. Braden Barilko with the big hit. Looked to the bench wondering if that whistle was going to wind up being on him. It wasn't. Sloppy pass there. Gets picked up. They need to clear the timeline. They do now. Lazor with the ball. He shoots that. Claxton with the easy pickup. And then the much harder save as Lazor got the rebound. Now, this is an interesting call 
because the call came from up high. So in other words, the Toronto player who's coming to the bench The Toronto player coming to the bench is, was the play was called from away. I, I have to tell you again, I, I fear that I have the wrong roster here with Toronto. Although I know that Claxton is the right goalie, so there are just so many people that are showing up that are not in the right numbers as we're looking at them. Lazor with that shot, that was, that was shot into the defender by Lazor. Save there by Claxton. Lazor gets the ball back. 35 seconds on the penalty. So they'll get the full minute. Claxton equal to that test on the outside shot from Trayton Mitchell. And here comes Toronto. 12 seconds on the man down. Pressure being applied. They avoid the pressure. So Toronto back on the attack. And there's a goal. So the little low move crease line left. And Toronto extends its lead to 2-0 with nine minutes remaining in the first half. And for, I, I am apologetic for the call that we have to make when we don't have a roster or a name, but I refuse to be calling, well, that was number six. I, I refuse to call guys by their number because quite honestly, we should know the players and if they don't give us the information, it's on them. Claxton with the save. And by the way, it's not that hard. Aquasasni has given us their roster and it all seems to be accurate and yet to see a player who's not on the roster. Evan Printup with a nice check there along the boards. So we will endeavor at halftime to try to figure out who from Toronto is actually whom. And there's a goal from the outside. Toronto with that score. So again, shot from the outside. A little confusion by Toronto, but they don't get called for the delay. Ball one away. Claxton with the save. Kind of lobs that up ahead. So here comes Aquasasti with a little hidden ball work. But Claxton up to the test on that shot. Lazor from the outside. Lazor been carrying a lot of weight for Aquasasni at this point. And that ball crosses back over. Power drive. Can't get to the front of the net for Toronto. Still has it as they're working a hidden ball trick. Hidden ball tricks, they work occasionally when they do. You see a lot of things. A little warding off doesn't get called there. Aquasasti gets the ball back. Memphis Mitchell with the ball. Kicks it over to Nicholas Tremblay. Tremblay fed in front, unable to handle it there. 
Kobe Cree, ball comes away to Claxton, and he dishes it out. So now the ball cycles for Toronto. A nice check there against James Spence. Braden Barilko. He dishes that over to Lazor. Lazor doesn't have numbers, so he slows it down. Ball now drop back. Trombley. Claxton with a great save, sprawling and going post to post. And with it, he denies the effort by Kendrick Angus. But on the play, Dakota McCann called for the penalty. So Akwasasny, trailing three to nothing, gets its first man advantage here. So it's Kobe Cree on the point with Lazor and Angus on the right-hand side. Fed across to Lazor, and he scores. Daniel Lazor puts Akwasasny Aces on the board finishing that cross field feed from Trayton Mitchell. So it's three to one. Penalty is released, we're back to full strength. Both teams playing a three one set on the faceoffs. I mean, they're keeping three guys back and only one player forward. That ball kicks around, Lazor gets it. Comes away with the loose ball. Nice moves there to get away from trouble, but got checked right at the end of that play. Jeremy Hill came away with the ball, or came away with the check, which created the loose ball. And now we've got a hold coming. So, great play on behalf of Toronto to create that because you had a triple team there. And yet, Akwasasny's Memphis Mitchell gets called for the hold. Not necessary. You know, you're always trying to get everything done, but not necessary to get that penalty there when it was a ball in the defensive end. If you just played solid defense, he was going to run out of time to cross the timeline. Instead, Toronto back on the attack. Fed across. Seth Miller couldn't come away with it. Off the post. So we have broken stick slowing things down to the disadvantage of Toronto because the penalty time keeps running. So this is McCann up high. Nineteen on the shot clock. Nice knockdown there. Keldron King playing defense. 10 on the shot clock. Barilko with the aggressive defense. He has been very aggressive throughout. Really like his defense. Showed good both aggression and speed. Lazor gets that ball across, drops it in front, and a nifty score as Kobe Cree finishes that feed inside, gets it by Charles Claxton, and with a minute and 10 seconds remaining in the first half, it's a three to two game. So Cree not only gets the goal, now he goes back to take the face off. Akwasasny back in this game, trailing three to two. And Cree wins the draw and comes away with the ball. So 
Cree all over the stat sheet with a goal and then a loose ball right there. 35 seconds remaining. Surprised that we, oh, we're gonna get the penalty call. So Evan Printup, who's been more at the defensive end, chased things down on the break. There was no break to be had. They slowed things down. He didn't handle the pass, but as he went for the loose ball, he was fouled. And so the, the push call, they called it with possession, goes against Toronto. And that gets us to the end of the half. So it will be Aqua Sosny with the ball and a man advantage to start the second half. What they are at a disadvantage is, is on the scoreboard. Our score at half, the Toronto Tigers three, the Aquasasni Aces two. We'll be back in just a moment with the second half of this game from the Lax All-Stars North American Invitational. <clears throat> Welcome back to the second half here at Onondaga Fieldhouse. I'm Chuck Jaffe calling the action for you. There will be a face-off to start the second half. According to the way the officials have done it, I'm a little surprised by that because there was the penalty called. A little loose ball push action on Cree as his stick got caught up with Gabe Donner. Donner with the ball now. Donner runs to, so Toronto right now wants to kill clock. They want to find a way to kill off the penalty. They flip that one in front. John Jacobs. And behind the play, we have some extracurricular activities. That sends Nicholas Tremblay to the box. So Tremblay comes to the box. Penalty has expired, so it will be a man advantage for Toronto. So here's the Toronto man advantage. Cycles around, ball gets knocked down in front. 
10 seconds on the shot clock, fed in front, stopped there by Jacobs, and for good measure, they said that the Toronto player was in the crease. So now it's print up, bringing the ball forward for Akwasasni. Print up splits the double but loses the ball. That ball picked up by Angus Tuax. Tuax dishes that over. And after he makes that, Tuax winds up getting called. So Angus Tuax winds up in the box. So it's four on four until the penalty is released against Tremblay. Tremblay's penalty not showing. And there's a goal from the outside. Akwasasni. Cash is in, it's even strength as they were still sorting out the penalty time. With that goal, Kendrick Angus gets the score. Two X left the box, but because the goal was scored at even strength, there's no release on the penalty. So Akwasasni ties things up. Toronto comes away with that loose ball. Jared Johnson loses it. Cree can't come up with it. Ball kicks around up high. Fed down low. Nice save there as John Jacobs sprawls to get that one ahead to print up. Nice save by Claxton. Loose ball kicks to Lauren Sam. He kicks that ball ahead. Now Toronto gets back on the attack. We are back at full strength. 10 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in regulation. Tied at three. Fed in front. Nice save there by Jacobs, who also corrals the loose ball. Got to watch the time. So we have an illegal substitution. They basically said that someone on Aquasasti left the bench early. This is one of those cases where there are a lot of bench calls. It is distinctly the most common call we have seen here. In fact, a game last night kind of turned on one of those calls. And some of that is that you have three officials and it makes it very easy for them or much easier for them to watch the benches. And yet, some of it's a little bit ticky-tack. So that shot in front and then literally shot into Dakota McCann. McCann scooped the picked up the ball that was shot off his back and was able to shovel it by Jacobs. And now we've got some pushing and shoving in the corner. So we'll see how they sort it out, but McCann's goal gives Toronto the four to three lead. So again, Toronto not doing us enough to provide us with rosters. McCann is in the box, as is another player. And then for Aquasasni, it's Dante David in the box, along with Skyler David. Oh, and now they've got now they've got Lazor in the box as well. So right now.
So they've stopped the clock, which normally they don't. A lot of jawing back and forth as the refs are sorting it out. But this is a key moment in the game. I mean, we just had what amounted to a ticky-tack bench foul that gave Toronto the man advantage. They turned a shot that was literally drilled into the back of Dakota McCann, and McCann makes a nice play, scoops up the loose ball and shovels it by Jacobs to get the goal, and then everything else has been extracurricular. But if you wind up with anything that lasts for any length of time, with 8.34 remaining, this is one of those times when you can determine a lot about the rest of this game. Meanwhile, Charles Claxton has come all the way from his net to just tell everybody to calm down. So they're still sorting it out. And with all the chatter, although I am not far from the scorer's booth, I can't hear what's doing, but what I do know is we're gonna be five on four. So five on four. We're going back to a draw with 8.34 remaining. So it'll be Cree and Jared Johnson taking the draw. And Akwesasne, which went down three to nothing, winds up coming all the way back to tie it. Gives up a goal, two acts, comes away with the loose ball. Stays on to play the shift at offense. There's a lot of shoving down low. And there's a score. Toronto stretches its lead to two as it takes advantage of its man advantage. So now we'll be back at even strength, but. And again, I would love to tell you who that was that's wearing number 99 for Toronto who just scored, but they haven't provided us with rosters. They actually said it's the same roster as last night. Their games yesterday, of course, they played Casey Powell's team yesterday, lost five to four. There was no number 99 on that roster. Cree with a nice loose ball, winning that one, shovels it in front, unable to be handled. Claxton comes away with it. Oh, could have been goalie interference there. They don't get the call. Actually, they do get the call. So again, Another case, another case where, where the ref closest to the ball, who should have been the one making the call, did not make the call. As it was directly in front of him. And the call there, when the goalie or any player has possession in the crease, you cannot check him. So that check they ruled was before the pass got away. Thus, it was interference. So loose ball now, print up going after it. Can't come away with it, seven on the shot clock. And a score for Toronto. As again, Toronto should now be leading six to three. And another, once again, second time today that number six for Toronto has scored. If his family is watching, well, I'm sure you know who he is. The rest of us have not been graced with that information. And if I sound unhappy about it, well, yes, I am. So we have a timeout called on the floor. Apparently something's happening with... We still have crowded penalty boxes.
While all this is going on, Troy Benedict comes out to play in the net for Aquasasni. Jacobs played a nice game. I don't think he's being pulled so much because of that, although they're now down by three goals again with five minutes and 56 seconds remaining. So they've now cleared the penalty boxes. We are back to full strength. We have five minutes and 56 seconds remaining. So here comes Aquasasti, headman pass. Can't get that one on the frame. It crosses the center line, so it's over and back. The good luck, Toronto needs to hit, or Aquasasti needs to hit something here quickly. Or they're about to run out of time with five minutes left, just over five minutes. Trailing by a score of six to three. And Benedict can't stop that one with the arm. So the big left-hander from Toronto gets his third of the game. We still don't know who he is, but again, his family and friends do. And it makes it a seven to three game. And the body language says that Aquasasni, having fought all the way back is now not in a position where they're quite so have so much fight in them. Nicholas Tremblay taking the draw, can't come away with it. Neither can, can Johnson, but Toronto does get the ball. A little behind the back shovely shot from Toronto. And a loose ball picked up. Keldron King, King ahead of the field. And he scores. And they say, no, he doesn't. They say he stepped in. Held it just an extra beat to beat Claxton. Now Claxton reverse transition to McCann. And he scores. So a big swing there as Keldron King with the great play for Aquasasni, but he couldn't pay it off because they said his foot was in the crease. And then Claxton alertly starts the play. Headmans the pass to Dakota McCann. And Toronto has blown this one open. It goes from three to nothing to three to three. And then after all the penalties and everything else, Aquasasti falling apart. It's now eight to three Toronto. Aquasasti wins the ball as, as, as Johnson moved early. Cree with it, stopped by Claxton. Claxton with the look ahead. So 13 seconds on the shot clock. Lazor got a piece but couldn't hold it. Gets kicked around and this is gonna wind up being a shot clock violation. Numbers for Aquasasni, four on one. So too many men call against Aquasasni. That would be how they got that four on two, or four on one was that they had four guys up front, but two guys back behind. And Toronto currently has too many men on the floor, and the refs missed it. Ball bounces ahead. Skyler Davis stopped by Claxton. Reset as the ball is picked up by Toronto. So, Skylar David comes to the box. 
134 remaining. And the wheels have fallen off for the Aquas Asni Aces. Got the ball back once they got even, a loss of composure when they gave up, when they gave up a, a man down goal and then quickly gave up several more. McCann, oh, that's not McCann. McCann's down low. Benedict comes down with the ball. Can't headman the pass. Nice defensive play. We'd love to tell you who that was that made it, but he's not on our roster. James Spence is. He kicks the ball over. So we're down to one minute remaining. 27 seconds left on the penalty, but 10 seconds on the shot clock. Benedict with a nice save there. Saw it all the way. And Akwasasi is going to finish this game with another guy in the box as Trayton Mitchell winds up being sent off. So it's five on three for 18 seconds. With the two man advantage, they should be playing. They're just keeping the ball wide and not worrying about it, just playing the time. First penalty is released, but walking to get there. They get it ahead to David, he can't handle it there. And we have a cross check. David couldn't resist, gets sent back for some more time in the penalty box. So Skylar David, it's a 15 minute half. Now admittedly, we only have 18.5 seconds left, so it won't be full serve, but Skyward David would have spent 20% of this second half in the box if it had been full serve. So again, a two-man disadvantage for the final 18 and a half seconds. And if everybody is merciful, they will simply start the clock here. Toronto looks content to really do nothing with it here. Again, the two-man advantage. And we're going to have another penalty coming. So penalty at the end of the game would have been on Keldron King. So... So a little bit of back and forth there at the end, but what we wind up with is a final of Toronto eight, Aquasasni three. Again, the Toronto Tigers eight, Aquasasni three. Sorry for not having full rosters for everybody, but glad that we could be here for you and glad that you are watching us. And we've got plenty more action today, both from the Onondaga Fieldhouse, where I am, and also Onondaga Arena. Check out all the games throughout today and tomorrow, all the way well into the evening on LAX All-Stars. For LAX All-Stars and the LAS NAI, I am Chuck Jaffe. Thank you for watching the Lacrosse All-Stars North American Invitational. We'll be back with our next game in about 15 minutes.